Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today for the webinar. Uh, we got lots of people coming in now. Uh, here we go. So my name is Brett. I'm one of the directors from Tutors and Exams. So today we're going to be discussing how to manage your exam nerves. So again, thanks for joining me today. As you can see the presentation, so what I'm going to go through today are some, uh, we're going to explore nerves, we're going to explore stress, and we're going to talk around some stuff around mindset. And uh, we're going to actually look into the psychology and the biology of that to create just a better understanding uh, and awareness. But then more importantly for you guys, I'm going to share some uh, ideas and some practical suggestions on how you can uh, best manage your exam nerves uh, and really what I'd like to get out of today is that by the end of the webinar you've all gone away with some new ideas uh, maybe look to get three or four ideas that are going to help you um, through the um, through the next few weeks where no doubt you're still revising to obviously going through to um, to taking the actual exams I've asked you all if you, um, if, if for those of you that could see my little introduction screen, uh, I'd ask have you all got a pen and paper? Because there will be a couple of things I just asked you to write down and um, good old fashioned pen, writing down things in, 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 in ink uh, really helps you psychologically and I'll explain a bit, that, a bit about that in a little while. And the whole thing that I want to talk about first of all around stress, anxiety, getting worried, is it's all stuff that's going in our in our head. And the first challenge is, well, yeah, but what's the reality? We're actually, um, so we've already asked the question, what is it specifically that you're worried about? So thank you for sharing. So what I want to do is get into the sort of some of the psychology and, and the biology that's going on with you right now. And first of all, I want to talk about um, fear. I mean, do you know that we're actually only born, we're, we're born with only two fears, and that's the fear of falling, when we used to live in trees, and the fear of loud, loud noises. So all the anxiety and worries and nervousness that we, we build as we, get, as we grow up and we get older are actually all passed on to us. We actually learn them either from our environment, from our, from our friends, family or whatever. So it, it's all learnt. And of course, to have some stress or, or be nervous about your exams is, is perfectly natural. And what fear is really is, should be a message to you with just to proceed with caution. A, a bit of stress or a bit of nerves is perfectly fine and in fact if you didn't have any stress or nerves around exams in particular then you'd probably wonder you know what's going on because it's actually a sign that yeah you're just all you're all fired up for it you're ready for it you you just want to perform well you just want to achieve your grades and pass the exams so that element of nerves you know we're not talking here about getting rid of any nerves altogether but the problem is is where the nerves or the stress are, are there long term and when they start to o overwhelm you. And that's what I really want to talk uh, talk to you guys about today. And um, this is where I want to um, start to look at offering you some practical solutions. Because did you know if you're in a state of high stress, then you, re you release a hormone called cortisol. Now what that does, that's your body, that's adrenaline, that's getting you ready to uh, to fight. It's the fight or flight. And this goes back to our primitive brain. This goes back to, you know, living in caves, living in trees or whatever, when we were worried about that saber-toothed tiger or having to protect ourselves from other tribes or whatever. Well, we still have that primitive brain thousands of years later, but now we have all the the modern day fears getting run over by a car or you know all, all the modern day uh stress that we have in our lives 
we still have that primitive response. And when your body releases cortisol, within seven minutes, your IQ is reduced by 50%. Now, if you're like me, you can't afford that, can you? And that's why when you're in a period of, uh, in, a, in a moment of really high stress, you can't think straight. We make stupid decisions. That, that's what's going on. Also, there's another fact for you. How many thoughts do you think a human has per day? How many thoughts go through our heads every day? Um, it's something like over 66,000 thoughts a day. And then if I said to you, and what percentage of those thoughts are positive versus negative, what would you imagine? I can't remember the percentage. It's something like over 75% of our thoughts are negative thoughts. So we're actually programmed to have a lot of negative thoughts. And, but that's our survival instinct kicking in. That's our primitive brain. So this section I'm talking about here is really trying to bring some more understanding to, to, to why we think and behave the way we do. And actually, more often than not, the problem is, is ourselves. It's all in our own heads. How many times have you worried about something and then you've, you've gone through a situation or you've had to do something that you were worried about and you've got to the other side of that and you've thought, do you know what? Actually, that was fine. I don't know what I was worrying about. So that's just something I wanted to, to start off the webinar with in terms of just, just a bit more understanding of, of just how it's normal but how we mustn't let it overcome us and how we, we mustn't let it overwhelm us. So the first step is, is that understanding and, and awareness. So what's the positive, what's the actual practical thing you can do? When you're in a step, sorry, a stage of high stress or nervousness, there's one thing, and this is where the biology comes in, and you may have you may have already be familiar with this, but the one thing we can do biologically to reduce our stress at any given t moment is to breathe. Now there are lots of uh, videos or books around different breathing techniques, but I came across one just a couple of weeks ago, and I'll give it a try, and it seems to work. So this is something called the double inhale. And then you breathe out almost like a sigh. So if you're game, um, we could go for it now. So what I mean by the double inhale is you take, a, if, you, if you're feeling stressed, you take a deep breath in as, as, as much as you can, but then you take another breath and you really push the air into your lungs. So you breathe in, and then breathe in again. So you've got a really, really deep breath. Hold it a little bit and then breathe out like a sigh. Now, I don't know if you're trying it with me or whether I'm just making a bit of a fool of myself, but try that. Breathe in and then breathe again to really push it in. Actually try and hold it, but then just that breathe out, that just and you'll actually feel your body relaxing. You might have to do it two or three times, but give it a try. Because the biology of that is it's resetting something called your autonomous nervous system. And that, um, I promise you, if you try it, or there are other breathing techniques out there that you could read up on, but the biological way to immediately reduce high stress levels are through breathing techniques. I hope all that has made sense. The problem with that though is I hope you find something that works for you and that certainly works for me. And you've reset your autonomous nervous system. But of course, that's great, but that's only going to last for so long, isn't it? Because if the underlying cause of whatever's making you stressed or nervous isn't dealt with, 
then yes, you can you can uh, reduce your stress levels by using the breathing techniques. But then we really need to start to understand what are the practical things you can do to make the whole situation better and reduce your stress levels. So moving on, the next thing is about the best way to do that is to change your own perspective. So as I say, all this is going on on your head. Um, if you go through a certain situation or some, a, a certain problem is thrown at you, do you, do you actually believe that you can control you can control your thoughts? You can decide. So you can decide how you respond to any problem or situation. And this takes a bit of practice, but again, sometimes we can't change what's happened. We can't change a situation that we're in or something we need to do, like like taking the exams. You're going to take them. Um, you're, of course, a bit nervous about the whole process, how well you're going to do, you want to do well. But you're not going to change that, are you? Unless you decide not to take your exams, you're not going to change that. But what you can change is your perspective on the whole process. If you're in a difficult situation, you can decide how you're going to respond. You can do that, trust me. It takes a bit of practice, but you can work on it. So at the moment, for example, you're looking ahead, you've probably got a few more weeks of revision and then your exams start and sometimes it can seem a bit overwhelming. You can you can feel like this, you're, you're carrying the weight, you know, you, you feel, you know, the extreme of that is you, in situations you can feel like you're a bit of a victim. So the first thing to do is to try and change your, change your mindset, to face it, face this head on engage and embrace this is just for a few more weeks now guys you've got to do your revision you're gonna go through your exams no one really likes that but yeah embrace it engage with it the next um, sort of tip I want to give you is um, something called the what if technique so a few people um, in the chat there but you're probably thinking I'm going to do all this work and, you know, what if I don't achieve my grades? Or what if I fail my exams? Change your perspective. How about thinking, what if I put in a, a, all the work I need to do over the next few weeks? And what if I actually, what if I actually smash it? What if I not only pass my exams, but I achieve better grades than I expected? What will that look like? What will my friends say? What will my family say? Visualize opening your envelope or getting your email with your results. And, and they're actually better than you'd hoped for. You know, what if that happens? No difference to going, well, what if I fail? What if you actually really smash it? So that's what you can do with what if. This is about changing your mind, uh, your mindset into a more positive frame of mind. I'm, I'm gonna sort of ask you to become a bit, um, schizophrenic if you like because this is these negative thoughts that I uh, mentioned earlier um, are actually like a, a voice in your head isn't it it's like the um, the little uh, devil on your shoulder putting these thoughts into your head um, there's actually a fantastic book called the chimp paradox I don't know if any of you heard of it that's actually used by all people like major athletes footballers whatever and uh, the guy who wrote it Steve and someone can't remember these voice this voice in your head that you're permanently battling with when you're stressed or nervous um, he likened that to being a, a chimp like a mischievous chimp that's within you and the problem is that a chimp is physically 10 times stronger than a human so it's actually really difficult to control whether it's being naughty causing trouble uh, being mischievous so the schizophrenic bit I want I wanted to try you to think about is imagine you could sort of take yourself out of yourself and look back at you almost like have an outer body experience and when you see yourself from afar you know 
if if you had one of your friends talking to you about I'm, I'm worried about failing my exams or I'm worried about my preparation, you would probably be giving them some some good advice, wouldn't you, about what they need to do. But somehow we're not able to do that for ourselves. So this is this is all about can you try and remove yourself from yourself and and l look at what your your mind is telling you and what those voices are saying and just actually go this is where you can control your thoughts and say no I'm not going to listen to that I'm not going to listen to that because I'm focused I'm not going to allow those thoughts to enter my mind so this is where things like the what if I'm going to turn my thoughts into positive thoughts another way you can do that is to think about in, in terms of when you're going through a difficult time or a difficult situation, is to again, switch, switch your thoughts to say, actually, as hard as this is, no situation is worth it if it's making you anxious, stressed or nervous, if it's not going to do you any good. But like with your exams, you're studying, you're looking to get a qualification, but that qualification is all about your journey, isn't it? It's, it's guiding you to to uh, move up to A levels, to start an apprenticeship, maybe to go to university, maybe to get that job. So what I'd like you to do is write down now, as hard as it is to be going through all the revision and then the exams and, and maybe some of the nerves and stress that that's giving you, actually think about as hard as that will be, What's the benefit to you? So in terms of you doing this work now, taking your exams, it's all gonna go well. How is this gonna benefit you? Please write that down. Now, the reason I'm asking you to write stuff down is it's been scientifically proven that when we write things down and put them on paper with physical pen and ink, it's the best way of taking the trash out of your head and putting it onto paper. That's why I've asked you to have a pen and paper and I'm asking you to write a few things down. Get them out of your head. Somehow just typing it, you know, we're all on laptops and writing things on computers these days. It's not quite the same as writing it down in pen. So hopefully you have started to write down how is, how is doing your revision taking your exams, getting your grades, how is that going to benefit you? So how is this situation serving you? I'm sure there are lots of positives. And the best way you can cope with stress is to change your emotions from one of fear and anxiety and nervousness into one of gratitude, because then you release another hormone called DHEA, sort of like the dopamine, so could you, this, I know this is a stretch guys, but could you get to a position of, do you know what? I'm grateful that I live in a society where I'm able to challenge myself and progress. And I get to study, um, I get to be able to study, take exams, achieve qualifications, and from that, move on to the next stage of my life. How lucky are you? <laughs> a bit of a stretch, I know, but if you hopefully get my point that if you can move away from negative thoughts into, I've got this, um, and get to a point where, as hard as this is, this is all for the good. Aren't I lucky? Now, the next part of my webinar is to manage your stress and your nerves you need a plan and this is anything in life going forward but particularly and one of the comments was you know i'm a bit behind okay have you got a plan how are you going to catch up there's uh there was a study at harvard university of the undergraduates that were studying there uh and the study was around setting goals and having a plan to achieve your goals and, and actually your goals in life 
So there are some people that go through life and they don't really have a plan or they don't plan anything. So the next group of uh, students um, that at least had a plan in their head, they didn't have it written down, but they had a plan. When they graduated and went on through life and, and achieved their careers or whatever, they were three times more successful than the group of students who didn't have a plan. Then there was the final group of students who actually had a written plan. They set down what they wanted to achieve through their studies, through their graduation, and then what careers they wanted to go on. And they had written goals and a written plan. Uh, 20 years later, when these uh, groups were studied, the group that had a written plan were 10 times more successful in terms of the jobs, their incomes and everything than those who had even got a plan but hadn't bothered to write it. So that's how important having a plan is. And if you think about your your anxiety at the moment around this or, or in any situation, have a written plan. So let's let's look at that in a bit more detail. So I've talked about write down your plan um, and use a good old pen and ink. So do you have a revision timetable at the moment? Have you got one written down and mapped out for the next few weeks? Um, I would advise if you've now got your exam timetable so that you know the dates of your specific exams and the subjects, start with that and then work back to today and map out a plan and build a revision timetable that you can have up on your wall in your bedroom if necessary and you can map out right i've got these exams on these days these are how all my subjects are, are spread out over so many days so many weeks i'm going to follow that pattern and i'm going to work it back now and, and I'm going to use that to build my revision plan and I'm going to have it written out. Uh, I don't know, get 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 um, uh, some old wallpaper and on the reverse reverse of the paper where where there's no uh, pattern, stick it up on your wall and map out your plan. And then particularly the, the person said that they're, they're behind. Yeah. What, what do you need to do to, to catch up? Uh, what do you need to do for the next month? to map out your time and a revision timetable and then and then as you go through it cross it off every day i'm sure you're working on these as well but then what are the tools you're going to use to as part of that plan um, revision guides there's loads of revision guides available i'm sure you're using them already uh, past papers uh, are really underutilized um, tool these um, there's many you can literally google past papers if you go on tutors and exams our website we've got links to past papers take take some of the pressure off yourself um, by getting as many past papers for your subjects as possible and then what you'll start to notice is that the same topics are covered they they tweak the question so you know it's not the same questions every year but you'll start to see where you need to focus your revision. And there'll be some, perhaps some topics that you decide, well, I'm not going to revise those because the odds of a question coming up about that is actually very low. The questions are always around these key areas, these key, key topics. So I now know where I need to focus my revision. And then do the past papers. Practice, practice, practice. Practice, put yourself in an exam situation in a quiet room with however long the exam is, time yourself and yeah, practice. And then again, you're not going into the exam cold. Can you find a revision buddy? You know, don't don't carry all this on your own, on your own shoulders. Um, share the burden. Um, you you are um, a, a basically a I can't think of the word, but basically you're a summary of the five key people that are closest to you and your environment. So what I mean by that is if you've got five friends who don't care, they're not, not, not interested, 
and they're not going to revise. And every time you say, sorry, guys, I can't come out, I'm going to revise. And they're putting pressure on you. Oh, what are you doing? You know, you nerd or whatever. How do you think you're likely to perform versus if your five closest friends are working really hard to, to revise and study and pass their exams, which group of friends should you, you know, be associating with to have the best chance of, of success? So yeah, find find a revision buddy, find a revision group. But you know, guys that are going to really support you and, and push you and give you um, the best support to get the best grades. Then a little bit about motivation. Over the next few weeks, God, you've got to do all this revision. And I, God, I just don't feel like it today. People talk about, you know, I need you need to keep motivated. You know, you, you've just got to get through the next few weeks. So you've got to keep your motivation levels up and, and put the work in. Well, it's so hard sometimes, isn't it? Mot motivation comes and goes. It's really hard to keep yourself motivated. There'll be days where Oh God, I, I've just had enough of this. I, I just want to sit and watch TV or go on my laptop and go on social media or whatever. So the point I want to make here is it's actually about discipline. Forget motivation, just discipline yourself. This comes back to the voice in your head. Oh, I don't want to revise today. I feel a bit tired. I can't be bothered. I've had enough of all this. Don't negotiate with yourself. Do your plan set out your revision timetable and don't negotiate with yourself just be totally focused totally disciplined don't listen to the voice however make sure you look after yourself you're not going to help your your levels of stress your level of nerves if if you're not feeling very well if you're tired so make so over the course of the next few weeks during your exams Make sure you look after yourself properly. Um, get plenty of sleep, eat properly. And one of the biggest physical things you can do for, for, for anxiety and stress outside of the breathing techniques is exercise. So get, get yourself outside. Hopefully the weather's gonna start picking up soon. Shock your mum and dad, take the dog for a walk. You know, there are times where get out, get some fresh air, plan yourself rest breaks, reward yourself. If you've got your revision timetable, you've stuck to your plan, put into that timetable time for breaks, downtime, time to relax. Um, if, if, you're, if you're burnt out, if you're tired, if you're emotional, you're, you're no good to anyone, particularly yourself. So don't forget, Yes, you've got to work hard over the next few weeks, but don't forget to um, look after yourself as well. Um, someone put in the comments that, um, yeah, not done exams for many years or, you know, not used to being an exam centre. If you're, if you're sitting your exams with us, come and have a look around. Uh, we, we are more than happy to have visits to the exam centre, as long as it's before the exams start, of course, at the end of April, beginning of May. But if you're booked into a, a tutors and exams exam centre and you haven't been in an exam centre for a long time, maybe you're being home educated, you're more than welcome to come and have a look around, meet the staff who are going to be looking after you during the exams, come and have a look at the building. They're all quite different. But yeah, you're more than welcome to visit the exam centre. Uh, just send them an email. Um, go on our website, which is tutorsandexams.uk. Um, you can get all the locate. You'll obviously know where you're sitting. You've probably got their contact details already. But just send them an email requesting um, a visit and they'll be happy to arrange that with you. And then, yeah, take the anxiety out of the logistics of of getting to the exam centre. If, if, if you're going to an exam centre for the first time, um, plan the route and have a have a practice run, whether that's um, driving yourself, mum and dad taking you, getting on the train, uh, getting on the bus. Yeah, have a practice run so that when it comes to exam days, 
you haven't just got that you know there's a little bit of stress isn't there about going somewhere having to find somewhere for the first time well do that bit before and then on exam day that's uh, part of it that you've you've already had a practice run if you like so moving on to the day of the exam and how to manage your your nerves as I say of course you're going to be a bit nervous but that's the key thing I, I hope we um, we can get you to a stage of just being a bit nervous. First thing, get everything ready the night before. Do you know what you're uh, allowed to take and not allowed to take um, in, into the exam centre and into the exam room? Um, so, for example, you can take your phone, but you're, you're not allowed to have your mobile phone with you. Um, coats and bags are not allowed into um, the exam hall. Uh, we have some facilities where you know we can securely store them for you but if the weather's nice hopefully you won't need a coat um, if you need to take a bag with you make sure it's a small bag uh, food and drink food's not allowed in the exam uh, hall uh, you're allowed a bottle of water but it's got to be a totally clear bottle no label but basically find out what it is that you're that you need to take for your exams but get it ready the night before so that if you've got a, an early morning exam uh, there's none of this rushing around getting all your stuff together maybe mum and dad are stressing you out saying come on come on we've got to go take the stress out of all that as well so get everything ready the night before so that you can get up have a bit of breakfast and then you're ready to go and leave the house nice and relatively relaxed key thing like I said, I suggested, come and visit the centre, have a look round, plan your route, get there in plenty of time. Uh, on one hand, it, it doesn't help because you, you're hanging around a bit and the nerves are building up, but it's far better to do that than be stressing because you're stuck in traffic, you're stuck on the bus, you're stuck on the train and you're worried that you might be late. Then when you get there, you'll be signed in, you show your ID, you'll be sat at your desk, so if, you, if you're sat there feeling anxious and feeling nervous, then remember what I said at the start, breathe. Do that, um, the double inhale that I just said. Deep breath and then a deeper breath and then just sigh, let it out. Do the breathing. Get your stress levels down. Get ready to run. Now, what I mean by this is um, I've been on a few courses in my time and uh, not so long, well, a few years ago, I went on a presentation course and it was about how to uh, improve your presentation skills when presenting to large groups of people. But one of the techniques there, what I mean by this is if you're in your chair now, what I'd like you to do is, is sit in your chair, but perhaps lean forward and have your feet ready. So imagine you're sat in your chair now, and I said, right, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna tell you in a minute to get up and run out the room. How would you position your feet? You have, you, so you'd have like, at the moment I'm doing this, I've got my left leg and I've, my left foot is firmly on the floor, but then I've got my right leg and I'm like ready to get up and run. And I found that really helpful. So when you're sat there, and you're just about to undertake a presentation or in this case, take your exam and you're feeling a bit nervous or do your breathing, but then just get yourself in the position of like ready to jump out of your seat. And I find that really helpful. So that's why I thought I'd share that with you today. And then two of the most common issues with performing in exams, uh, two of the most common mistakes are you've done all this work you've worked so hard, you've done your revision, comes to exam day, you've got the exam paper, and then people don't read the question properly because they just want to crack on. It's against the clock. So first bit of advice, make sure you read the question properly. Just take those first few minutes of the exam to go through the question, read it properly, check you understand it. And then the big thing, make sure you answer the question particularly in those kind of uh, subjects like I don't know history English where you're doing more of an essay 
type question, um, make sure that you answer the question. Uh, you've probably done a load of work. You've got a load of information in your head. The danger is you can get all that information out of your head onto the paper, but not actually answer the question. So that's the key one. Two, two biggest mistakes. People don't read the question properly and then people don't actually answer the question. If you're running out of time in an exam and it's that kind of essay type exam, um, don't start stressing. If you're running out of time, just write bullet points. If you've got answers to give, just put them down in bullet points. You'll, you'll still get lots of marks. Rather than keep writing, 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 oh damn, I've run out of time. Look at the clock, keep an eye on the clock. I'm, a, I'm going to run out of time, but I've still got these points to make. Just do them as bullet points. Finally, guys, having said all that, relax. If you've done the work, it's all going to be okay. So we're coming to the end now. First question is, I said, what I hope to achieve today is that out of all those things I've gone through, there'll probably be at least three things that you've learned today that you can take on board, write them down now of what can, what can help you manage your exam nerves. Have you got a plan? If you haven't got one already, think about what I've said. Hopefully you like my suggestions. If you haven't got a plan, really, really guys, write one out. If you've already got a plan, review it. Make sure you're still happy with it. 